Alright, so unfortunately when I recorded this tutorial, I didn't have audio set up, so I recorded it talking the whole time and there was no audio once I finished. So instead of re-recording it, I'm just going to go ahead and make this a bit of a shorter video and narrate over it. Either way, let's get started. This method is inspired by Bullock3D on Instagram. I saw his renders and I was like, wow, I want to try that. And I came up with a method that was pretty similar, but probably a little less detailed than his, but it's pretty easy to set up, so I wanted to share it with all of you. Let's get started. The first thing I did was add a cube. Go into edit mode and stretch out one side. This will be our basic apartment. Add some edge loops in order to shape out a window, and before deleting the face of our window, duplicate the cube and add a wireframe modifier. Play with the thickness until you get something that you like. To give this apartment a little bit of extra depth, let's go ahead and take this wireframe modifier and scale it up so it's a little bit disconnected from the window. This is why we added edge loops to the entire cube instead of just the front face. Once you've played with the scale and scaled it to be roughly the size of the apartment but sticking out, we can go back into object mode. Let's go to our original cube and punch out the window by going into edit mode, selecting the face, pressing X on our keyboard, and deleting faces. Let's create some scaffolding. Create a cube and put it in a corner. Go to edit mode and triangulate faces. Then do the same thing as before and turn it into a wireframe with the wireframe modifier. Let's make this into a big building block. Add an array to your original cube and make sure it is arraying on the Z axis. Bring it up as tall as you want, then click on your other objects, and then control click on your arrayed cube and copy to selected. Depending on your wireframes, you may need to bring them down or up by one or two arrays. Do the same thing but on the Y axis to add more rooms. To give this building depth, instead of copying this side four times, I like to add a cube and scale it to fit the entire building size. Then, subdivide it a couple times. Like before, duplicate the cube and set it to wireframe. We can then duplicate the wireframe again and scale it up for even more fake detail. Now, here is where we take this from just a boring old building to a mega structure. Hit A on your keyboard to select everything and then duplicate it. Bring it up, duplicate, repeat. Do this until you have a pretty interesting structure. It really is an easy method, but it creates some crazy results. You can spin pieces of the buildings around, you can have them intersecting, and once you have a giant building, you can just duplicate the whole thing to get a giant city. And because of the amount of wireframe modifiers we have on everything, it looks unique, even though it is just one building being placed around and rotated everywhere. The next thing to do is add some lighting, but before we do that, please like the video so my content can get some more traction in the algorithm. I hope to make more tutorials like this at a more rapid rate in the future, and the best way to support that is by leaving a like. Add a cube with the principled volume. I started with a density of 0 .001 and a 0.5 anisotropy, but I brought the density up later. Make sure you increase your volume samples so it looks more realistic. For renders like these, I like to do a complementary color split lighting setup. For this render, I'll go with red and blue. I put one area light up in the sky with a power of 15 to 25 megawatts and one blue light on the bottom right at around 5 megawatts. You'll need to change these powers as you change your density and depending on the position, but usually you have to make them pretty strong. Finally, the part that takes this to the next level. Add a camera and set it to an Instagram friendly resolution like 1080 by 1920. Change the camera mode to panoramic, fisheye lens, polynomial. There is really no method to the madness here, just mess with the settings until you get a cool look. On renders like these, I like to play with the shift X and Y to push the camera perspective over. This is how you get those cool camera lens curves without it just looking like a normal fisheye lens render. From here, you can go ahead and just keep playing with your scene until you get something aesthetically pleasing. For me, I found pushing a building really close to the main building looked pretty cool, and then I duplicated the main building a couple times and offset it so I got this little stepping angular look. Finally, make sure you're in the very high contrast mode, but of course, you're going to spice this up in Photoshop anyway, so if you want to do that in post, just don't sweat it. I like doing it in camera because I get to see a more accurate representation of what I want this to look like. And that's basically it. If you want to take this even further, here are some ideas. Go ahead and add a concrete texture to everything, add a light to a window, or if you want to add even more variation, you could take the edge of the building and bevel it like I did in this render. Or you could go even crazier with your wireframes and get something that looks like this. 
It's a fun method that allows you to create really unique renders that look different, even if you're just changing the lighting and moving the buildings around a little bit. Either way, that is how you make awesome mega structures in Blender. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe for more tutorials. I've been Alex from Level Up Plus VFX, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.